When I was a kid growing up in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, uh, that'd be Maryland, Pennsylvania, although my wife grew up in Virginia, which, same watershed, I used to go visit my grandparents on the Severn River. If you don't know where that is, um, it's where the Naval Academy is located uh, in Annapolis. And on the Severn River, that's uh, the part that they lived on. It's not actually a river there. It's an estuary. So the water's brackish. And the uh, blue crabs of the Chesapeake Bay used to go up into the estuary. And actually caught a soft shell crab once, which was pretty exciting. But pretty regularly when we go to visit uh, Nana and Pop, as I call them, Nana would uh, save up chicken necks in the freezer. And we'd go out about 5 in the morning down to the pier and have the chicken necks tied to a little rope. And we'd throw them down in the water, have them tied to the pier. And we'd uh, watch them and pull on them a little bit to see if there was a crab on them. Now when there was a crab on them, uh, the crab would kind of pull back a little bit and you could slowly pull the uh, chicken neck up close enough that you could net the crab. And we'd actually get a whole box of crabs um, by the end of the morning, you know, uh, 8 or 9 o'clock. She'd also bring donuts. So it was a lot of fun uh, catching a box full of crabs. And of course we only ever kept the uh, female crabs. Not the female, I mean the male crabs. They had to throw back the females, get that backwards. Because otherwise, um, you know, if you catch the females and the males, then there's not going to be uh, little baby crabs next year. But never got to do that with my kids. Because people who were taking crabs out of the Chesapeake Bay overfished the bay. And you can't really get crabs out of the bay anymore because they just aren't there. In fact, if you go have uh, quote unquote Maryland blue crabs at a restaurant, uh, you know, all steamed with Old Bay, chances are they're probably going to be from Louisiana or maybe North Carolina. And that's pretty sad because it was, it was a pretty uh, exciting part of my youth that I haven't been able to share with my own children. And so when I saw this article, uh, about privatizing fisheries to save them, I thought, well, you know, that's that's a good idea. Anything to save uh, fisheries, because we all like fish, and it's pretty much a truism of the 20th and 21st century that uh, fish stocks around the world are disappearing, and if we're not careful, we're going to be out of fish here before the end of the century. Now, this some project. 2048, I think that's probably a little bit of an overworry, but still, overfishing has caused the loss of a number of uh, different fish stocks no more. Another example from uh, the Chesapeake Bay fishery, which I'm familiar with, is uh, rockfish, because they reproduce so slowly. Um, my grandmother, you know, talked about eating rockfish, but you can't get it in Maryland anymore because it takes 40 years for these fish to grow to full size. And they just got completely fished out. So I think everyone should uh, check out this article. It's not, you know, he's probably saying Brad's going on his libertarian bandwagon there again. But it's actually from a fairly liberal publication. They usually support the uh, Democrat for President and uh, Science Magazine. You know, so I think you should uh, definitely check out the numbers and uh, read the article. Um, I'll post the link over here. Uh, probably can't see it unless you're going to a university library or something like that. Unfortunately, in the short term, in the long term, it should be um, available to the general public. Write your representatives say, maybe we should privatize fisheries. Because I like fish and, you know, fish food is brain food. So. You want smart people in the 22nd century? We're going to need to have some fish left. <laughs>